Be their line here, I'm just here to let you guys know that this game is definitely not for minors. It has some intense scenes of violence, gore, assault, and adult content as well. And here are some of the content warnings uh, at the beginning of the game. There's more content warnings in the game itself and on the game page. I will not be putting a link to it in the description. Please pause the video if you still haven't read the content warnings. But without further ado, let's get down into Celia's route. All right, Celia, I'm coming straight for you. It's all about the voices I heard. The voices behind the blue window seemed a bit softer than the others. I suppose if I had to choose a safer option, I'd point to the blue window. I heard her light laugh. That's not too surprising considering your options. I'll take pity on you. 190. I heard an obnoxious snort. You sound so full of yourself. You should relax and let someone fill you with something else for what? <laughs> 200. 300. What the frick? What's wrong? Did daddy not give you a big enough allowance? Her laugh was quiet and cruel this time. That's what I thought. I hear 300. Anyone else? Aha, sold! To the elegant lady in blue. We'll prepare the shipment to send out with you right away. Thank you so much for coming. Shipment? What did that mean? I felt a sharp jack in my ankle. Why? Try to bend down to inspect the pain, but I just crumpled to the floor. There was a pain in my leg and I couldn't move. I was seeing double and try to speak. And I passed out. My head hurts. I slowly opened my eyes and pried my face off the hard surface it was stuck to. A desk. I tried to pull away from the desk, making a loud clang. Handcuffs. Each of my hands was handcuffed to a desk leg, keeping me painfully seated in a chair and bent low. And my clothing. I didn't recognize it. Finally. Hello, ma'am. I guessed at the face of the woman looking down at me. Who? I don't know what they drugged you with, but I will start to worry you just lay there drooling forever. Are you awake now? Uh, good. My name is Celia. You may call me Celia, oh ma'am. She stepped a bit closer, eyeing me up and down. Something about her sharp gaze set to shiver down my spine. This is the part where you introduce yourself. Uh, I am saving, because I don't know what this is going to lead to. I will say my name. My name is Lion. I didn't see the point of resisting in this position. For a moment, she just kept looking at me. Appraising. Good. She walked in front of the desk and tapped it gently with her nail. You were very expensive. So I'm expecting you to perform. Just do as you're told. It isn't that hard. If you're good, you get to live. I'll bring you food and take care of you. If you're not, then you suffer. Simple. Suddenly, the sound of a phone alert dinged. She turned around and started rapidly tapping at her phone. Freaking moron. My gaze wandered around the dirty old room. It definitely looks like it was abandoned. My eyes locked into the dark stain by my feet. What the frick? That's definitely blood. Attention was snapped away from the stained carpet as I heard her hiss a string of curses under her breath. Alright. Apparently I have to go babysit some mad children at work. I have to go. Wait! Uh, I think there's been some kind of mistake. I didn't sign up for this. I was kidnapped. <laughs> That's not my problem. Now shut up. I'll be back later. She stepped towards the door. You just gonna leave me like this? I pull out the handcuffs. If you're a good little mouse, maybe we'll get you somewhere more comfortable next time. Hmm? She pulled open the door. And then she was gone. I listened to the click of her heels on the floor disappear outside. Soon after, only the mechanical hum on the fluorescent lights remained. Ah. Oh. Oh, now the game begins. Okay, okay. So, so. Search area. I scanned the room around me. There's tons of old office supplies, shelves, and drawers to go through. I can't move. I, 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 I search more. I scan the room around me. I can't move. Uh, I have cuffs. It's kind of hot. Shackles of long chain connected to the desk. I can't get them off my wrist. Okay, uh, well, I don't need to worry about the time or anything, really. Uh, do I struggle like a worm? What happens if I just stay? What if I go to sleep? I try to fall asleep. I just wasn't tired enough. I stay. Okay, I laid my head down, try to get comfortable. I stay. I stay in the room at the desk. Stay here. I stay in the room by my desk. Stay. I shuffled slightly in the chair. I think I'd smell some kind of mold. Stay here. 
I stay in the room at the desk. Wait, wait, wait. Something about mole search area. Uh, okay, still nothing. I can't move. I stay here. I'm trying to keep my mind from wandering. What the hell does this woman Celia even want from me? Why is she doing this? My forehead hit the desk with a light thud. There's nothing I can do to figure any of this out. Okay, how's my status? Eh, I still got time. I stay in the room at the desk. I stay! The faint hum of the lights was interrupted by the light tapping of someone approaching the door. My heart rate jumped. A second later, she entered the room. There you are. Did you have a comfortable night? I honestly had no idea what time it was. I kept my head low. Huh. Well, now I got plenty of time to break you in. I have a special job for you that I've been waiting for. She produced a black bag and another set of handcuffs. Something about my expression must have caught her eye because she let out a light laugh. Don't worry. I'm not going to kill you. Not if you behave, anyway. We're just gonna play a little role-play game. She walked behind me and placed the bag over my head. Uh, what are you doing? I'm not playing anything, please. I don't want this. I stay silent. Hey, I stay silent? I'll be a good boy. I felt a drawstring of the bag tied around my head. It was scratchy, but still loose enough to breathe through the bag. I felt the click of a second pair of handcuffs around one of my hands. I felt a surge of adrenaline. She was going to uncover me from the desk. This could be my chance. I stay calm. I was not really in a good position to fight back. I could see it all. The thought being moved from my uncomfortable position at the desk was enough to make me compliant. I felt her open the cuff on my left hand. I let my arm go limp as the metal dropped away. I heard her make a sound of approval before she closed the second pair of cuffs, biting my hands together behind my back. It was a relief to finally be out of that position. She grabbed my shoulders and guided me away from the desk. I couldn't see anything, so I stepped forward timidly. On your knees. There wasn't much point in arguing. I crouched down and lowered myself to my knees as instructed. Now, I heard the creak of the office chair I previously occupied. It's time for some fun. Your name is Edward. You steal ideas and have the composure of a weasel. I heard their chair creak again and her voice was closer. You're a bottom-feeding parasite who is incapable of original thought. Her voice had taken a much sharper tone. Isn't that right? Uh, yes, ma'am? That's right. I felt her heel on my back for an instant bef before being shoved face first onto the ground. Is she stepping on me? I groaned against the scratchy black bag as I felt her walk to my side and place a heel on my back. You freaking vermin. She started pressing the sharp heel of her shoe into my flesh. You think you can screw with me? You. I writhed as she ground the heel down. How worthless. I couldn't help but whine in pain. The sound seemed to affect her since the weight of her foot left my back. I laid still as she paced quickly next to me. Get up. I got up off the floor onto my knees. The two angry taps of her shoes approaching were all the warning I had before being kicked ruthlessly to the side. I could breathe. I curled on my side, gasping, trying to get my lungs to work. I'll crush you. I barely got a single gasp in before a second kick stabbed me into my stomach. I clamped my mouth shut to keep the contents of my stomach down. Everyone will see you. Broken. And I'll laugh. But I finally managed to wheeze, I immediately began coughing. I lay on the ground, coughing and suppressing pain whimpers. I couldn't tell where she was. Alyssa began to notice her breathing. She was practically panting. Uh, yeah, yeah, hey, hi, I apologize. I'm sorry. Her breathing became quiet. I might as well play along. I am worthless. <laughs> My voice was shaking with uncertainty. I hope this is what she wanted. She was silent for a long moment. Then I heard her sit down in the chair again. Crawl for me. There's no point in salvaging pride now. I barely held in a whimper as I scrambled to get back onto my knees from the floor. I struggled for balance uh, with my hands cuffed together. I awkwardly crawled towards the sound of her voice. I flinched as I felt her shoe on my head through the bag. But she didn't put as much pressure on as before. She seemed to just be resting there. I didn't dare move, so I just laid there and tried to ignore my throbbing ribs. I felt her foot move a bit and heard some shuffling. I tried to stay calm instead of imagining what she would do next. My fear slowly turned to curiosity as I heard nothing from her but breathing. What? And I kept listening, realizing that her breathing was getting a bit louder. I noticed the weight of her foot was shifting, rhythmically. Oh my god, is she- Oh, uh, what? I instantly froze up. Did she just moan? But what from? My mind went in several different directions at once before settling on just staying still. At least she's not kicking me. The pressure of her foot increased, slightly grinding my face into the bag. I accidentally let out a muffled whimper. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what? She responded with a harder press and a more audible moan. Her foot jerked against my head and I heard her breathing slow and damp and deepen. I could feel my own face flushing as she shoved me a final time, breathing out a cry through clenched teeth. I jerked in surprise as a chair suddenly creaked and she got up. She only took a moment to catch her breath and pat her clothing. Very good. You're a natural. I heard her pacing for a few moments. She walked back to me and yanked my bag off abruptly. I kept still as she stared at me sharply. She seemed to be mulling over some decisions. Suddenly, she stood up straighter and walked to the door. I think we're done here, for now. Her gaze dropped to my handcuffs as she chewed her lip for a moment. I tried to appear as non-threatening as possible. I guess I'll take the O's. Stay still. I watched her produce a tiny key and bend down. I stay perfectly still. She popped open the metal restraints and took them. Don't make me regret that. Without any other words, she headed for the door and slipped out. I heard the click of a lock and her quick steps fading away. I sat up wincing. Well, I can sort of move around at least now. I rubbed the red marks on my wrist and thought about what to do next. Ah, well, uh, should I be a good puppy? Should I be a good puppy and stay? I, 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 I don't know. I searched the area. Filing cabinets. I rubbish through all the cabinets and papers. Almost nothing about paper. Rusty stapler, batteries. Doesn't seem to be anything I can use in here. All right, I searched the area. I searched the drawers. I saw one out of the room and started going through everything. Every shelf and drawer was filled with dusty, discolored paper. Whatever this place is, people haven't been here for a while. I kept shuffling through everything. Oh! In the back of the filing cabinet. Something small and metal. A key. I quickly put it in my pocket. This is about to come in handy. Okay, I searched the floor. Wait, what's that? I saw something shy on the floor in front of the door. I crawled over to pick it up. A hairpin? Looks like a hairpin. Maybe she dropped it on her way out. Right. Oh, I could use the hairpin on the door. Ooh, do I want to leave though? Do I want to leave? Do I want to leave? Yes, I do. I do want to leave. I'm leaving the room. I push a pin into the... Actually, what happens if I stay? So I'm just going to stay. I stay in the room. Wait, wait, wait. Am I tired? I'm tired enough to go sleepy. I'm gonna go EP. Yes. And my hunger is going down. I gasped as I woke up. I looked around myself, remember where I was. I groaned and shook myself alert. I stay here. I nearly jumped at the sound of a low growl. Ugh. It was just my stomach. I'm absolutely starving. I stay here. I stay in the room. I stay here. I stay in the room. I stay here. Stay in the room. Stay. Oh, it was her again, and she didn't look happy. I instinctively moved back into the corner of the room. Relax. You're just keeping me company today. Come on. She turned and motioned me to follow. Now. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. She disappeared outside the door. I tentatively stepped outside. A long hallway ended in what appeared to be some sort of lounge area. Her cabinets and papers littered the place. Past the lounge area was a door that looked like it went to another office. However, my attention was much more focused on what appeared to be an elevator. Could that be the way out? She claps into one of the dusty lounge chairs. I stood there, dazed from a bizarre situation. Sit. I jumped slightly at the abrupt command. Uh, yeah, I sit on it. Do I sit on the chair? I looked around the room and chose the chair across from her. It was dusty from disuse, but more comfortable than I expected. Good. Just sit there. Right. You're probably hungry by now, right? To my embarrassment, I perked up like a dog. That's what I thought. She moved her coat and rustled through a plastic bag I hadn't noticed before. Then she held out two items to me. Oh my god, a bottle of water and some wrapped jelly sandwich. I gingerly accepted them. Seeing the food awaken my hunger so quickly that it startled me. She seemed to sink into her chair. She looked exhausted. Couldn't wait any longer. Immediately opened the food, water and drink. I tried to eat carefully and quietly. I realized too late that she was aware I was staring at her. What does that look for? Uh, why would you want to relax here? Isn't keeping me here more work for you? Say nothing. Um, why would you want to relax here? She narrowed her eyes at me. No. No, my home filled with 20-year-old doe-eyed cooks and cleaners and whatever the frick else is not more comfortable. My disgusting piece of poo husband runs the place like he's some sort of discount Hugh Hefner. I watch her nails dig into the armrest until she suddenly let go and claps back into the chair. I don't even care that he screws them. She lets out a bitter laugh. Saves me the trouble. 
It's their faces. Subservient, mewling sheep always look at the floor. They're so young, but they're already broken. Someone brought, bought their dignity and they gave it up just like that. Without a fight. It disgusts me. I flinch as her sharp gaze flicked back to mine. I couldn't help but gulp at the parallels between her sheep and myself. That doesn't sound that comfortable. Do I disgust you? Do I disgust you? To my surprise, she lets out a laugh. Oh, mouse. Aren't you just precious? She never answered the question. She closed her eyes and leaned back. I briefly look around the room with a jolt of adrenaline. She's hardly paying attention. Don't even think about it. I froze. Can she read my mind? We're gonna have a simple, relaxing evening. I'm not gonna hear my husband's voice and you're not gonna give me any trouble. I slowly let the air out of my lungs. Maybe I should just enjoy the break. I returned my attention to the deli sandwich. I don't know if it was a hunger, but it tasted like the best sandwich I've ever had. I almost began to relax when I heard the buzz of a phone. Now, for frick's sake! She growled as she pulled out her phone. For a split second, I felt sorry for whoever was on the other line until I remembered my own position. No, I'm not home. I'm not in the office either. What do you want? It's not your goddamn business, Harold. Fine. Yeah, I'll be there at seven. I flinched as she turned off the phone and fumed. Shh, come on. She motioned for me to get up. I... I don't want to think about men for another second. I recalled from her sudden outburst. Just follow me. I got up and followed her angry place, uh, pace back to my small prison. Get in. I swear I could feel her anger and waves radiating from her body. I don't want the anger to be directed my way. I obeyed and heard the door slam behind me. I was sweating. I think I dodged a bullet. I slumped to the floor. Alone again. What happens if I just stay? Like, this is, this is getting interesting, actually. Uh, okay, my energy is low enough for me to sleep, so I'm definitely gonna sleep. Alright. Because I'm curious, like, what, what's going on with Celia? I gasped as I woke up. I looked around myself, remember where I was. I groaned and shook myself alert. Uh, okay, status. Uh, I am hungry, but I don't have anything I could eat, so... I can't sleep, uh, so I'm just gonna stay. And stay, and stay, and stay, and stay. God damn it, is she ever coming back? I stay in the room. Like, how long is she gonna take? I'm getting hungry now. Stay in the room. I stay in the room. The click of the door interrupted my thoughts. I jumped at the sound. Knock, knock. She entered the room briskly, and I realized I had flinched backward. She definitely noticed. Are you feeling a bit jumpy still? I suppose it's only natural. I noticed that she was carrying a cardboard box. Well, there's no need to be skittish. I was thinking about you all day at work today. And I decided to bring you a little treat. I flinched as she stepped closer. Here. She placed the box on my lap. There was something tense in her voice. Something that made me scared to open the box. I looked up at her. Go on. I tentatively lifted the top. Donuts? Huh? It's just a box of donuts. They smell good. My stomach growled. Uh, I can eat these? Well, of course you can, Mouse. They're for you. I trembled slightly as I took a donut from the box. I took a bite. It's good. It just tastes like a normal donut. I began to register how hungry I was and took another bite. I almost forgot about her presence for a second before I glanced up and saw her intense stare. She was focused on me like a laser. I was too hungry to worry about being watched. I silently ate the donut and swallowed. After I finished, I glanced up at her. I didn't tell you to stop. I glanced back down at the box. She doesn't expect me to eat all these, does she? I grabbed another one and started eating. How does it taste? I swallowed my current mouthful. Uh, good. Describe. It. I shivered. It's sweet. The ice is smooth and the dough is really cakey and soft. I had no idea what I was doing. Mmm. Hey, yo! I gathered a bit of courage between bites. Why? Shut up and eat. I must have looked as confused as I felt because she sighed and began to answer. They were on my desk this morning. I'm sure it was that snake, Jennifer. Little fake congratulation note on it and everything. I made sure to keep eating, but I still couldn't make sense of the story. I'm not sure I, uh... Oh. Ignorance really is bliss, isn't it? She sighed wistfully. You don't get to where I am by eating whatever you want. If you're not an old man, you've got to do a lot more than just be good at your job. That hardly counts for anything. I have to be flawless. 
I need to recognize sabotage for what it is. And I have to stay two steps ahead. I gulped and shakily returned my attention to the pastries. A chocolate one next. I quickly picked out a chocolate donut as instructed. She took a few deep breaths, watched me chew. Somehow it seemed to calm her down. What sort of weird fetish is this? I kept eating the donut awkwardly as she stared. I got to the fourth donut and began to struggle. I was so hungry before. But now I'm starting to feel sick. I don't think I can eat anymore. She stared at me for a moment and bit her lip. One more. I breathed hard. I can do this. I slowly grabbed another donut and bit in. I struggled to keep it down. I was squirming slightly, trying to find a position that didn't hurt as much. I glanced up and saw that she seemed to be deeply enjoying the show. I just focused on the pastry I kept eating. There's a good little mouse. I managed to stuff the last bit down and groan softly. My insides were aching. But Celia looked down extremely satisfied. She walked to me and took the box. Not bad. I flinched slightly as she extended her hand. To my surprise, she just brushed the crumb from my face. I sat there, stunned, while my stomach lurched. I wish I could stay a little longer. But I could only afford a quick visit today. You understand, right? Uh, uh, I couldn't think straight. I really did feel sick. <laughs> I'll be back soon. With that, she turned around and left, closing the door behind her. I lay down and waited to feel better. Uh, too many donuts, Fred! <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go sleep and see what happens. Where am I? Ugh. I have a hard, I have a pounding headache. Where am I? I didn't recognize this room. How did I get here? Wow, it took you forever to wake up. That was supposed to be a weak dose. I tried to back away, but I couldn't. In a pang of terror, I realized I couldn't move. I looked down at my body and saw I was completely tied up with bright red rope. Oh, well, you seem to be able to struggle at least. How do you feel? Uh, be honest. My head hurts. Yeah, everything hurts. Ugh. Knocked you out a little too hard, huh? That's what I get for buying drugs from the internet, I guess. Hopefully you'll perk up as we get busy. She pushed me from my slump position onto my back. I couldn't do anything but fall. The intricate pattern of rope held my limbs together. I tried to push down the rising panic on my chest. When did she even drug me? When was I sleeping? Here's the thing. I had a really terrible day today. I gasped as she sat down, straddling my waist. I didn't expect her to get this close. And this is what I bought you for. I jerked against the bindings as I saw her pull out an expensive looking knife. Oh, don't worry. You don't have to do anything complicated at all this time. It'll be really easy. I just need you to bleed for- Oh no! I yelled in protest as she pressed the knife to the side of my face. I screamed more in fear than pain. The knife was so sharp that I didn't feel it as much as I expected to. But the panic tightening in my chest was only getting worse. See? It's not so bad. She held the knife to my face and caressed me. The blood of her fingers told me the knife did really did cut in deep despite the sensation. You should see her face right now. You're so cute. I straight against the ropes as she dipped the blade uh, down my collarbone and slid through the thin layer of flesh there. I grunted and screamed. I know, I know. She pressed the knife to my arm. It's okay. Scream all you want. I tried to grab my teeth as she kept pressing the knife into my skin. She moved it so slowly, going deeper. I couldn't hold it in. I screamed in earnest as the knife penetrated the muscle. Please, no more. She was panting softly. She ignored the plea and just picked up another place to drag the knife over. I arrived, screaming and sweating as she kept making cut after cut. I couldn't keep focus. My body and mind were in fire. What is happening? Is it the drug she used on me? I wheezed as the pressure on my wrists increased. I automatically looked towards the source of pressure and my breath caught in my throat. Her, her straddling position and her short skirt revealed bare thighs and black lace. Oh, okay, so I really could not show this. I felt her weight lift from my body immediately, my vision began to spot. The strange adrenaline and euphoria at the moment was giving way to aching pain and hissing static in my ears. I tried to focus as I heard her shoes click. I can't. I slowly wake up. Groaning in pain. Also, uh, we clearly skipped a whole scene, okay? Like, she took us to a warehouse or something and decided to, like, jab a jab and stab us up. Uh, and something else happened in between. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you what happened. It's over on Patreon. Whatever. I must have passed out. I looked around the familiar room. Ugh, I'm back here. 
I leave the room, I stay here, leave the room, stay here, leave the room, stay here. I, 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 how am I feeling? My sanity is low. I am going to stay here. Has that noise always been so loud? The mechanical hum of the lights and drones of the ventilation system covered my ears. They seem to vibrate right through my skin. Ugh. I guess it's a surprise when I realized I've been digging my nails painfully into my head. My ears were ringing. I have to get out of here. Stay. I stay in the room. 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 If someone out there doesn't make a remake of this, I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, uh, how am I doing? I still have to stay for quite a bit. I stay in the room. Stay in the room. I stayed. 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 Like the good little mousy I am, I am staying. After listening for a moment, I realized it must be the elevator. I moved to the corner of the room and waited. I could hear a voice. Wait, two voices. They sounded angry, shouting. One was definitely Celia, but the other sounded like man. I flinched aback as they got closer. The door flew open and a man marched in. What the? What the hell is this? I couldn't seem to react fast enough as Celia pushed past him and grabbed me. While I was just barely registering the man in the doorway, I felt the blade of a knife pressed threateningly against my neck. Not another step, Harold. Uh, I stay quiet. Didn't dare make another sound. I could feel the knife shaking against my skin. Her body was pressed against my back. I could feel her breathing. She pointed the knife out towards Harold. You stupid dingus. You ruined everything. Oh, I ruined everything? Give you all the freedom and time in the world to do whatever you want. And you screw around in some condemned asbestos trap with some kind of homeless person? And, and what? Kidnapping, I guess. Shut up. He ignored her completely. What if someone found this? What if the media found this? Take another step and I'll kill them. Celia, please. Do you really think I care if you get your blouse dirty? My blood ran cold as I watched him take a step forward. Stop bluffing. We're going to clean this up. And we're going home. The knife wasn't pressed against my throat anymore, but she was clutching me close. Get out of the way, Celia. She was trembling. Then she let me go and stepped away. I'm tired of cleaning up your messes. Ah, oh, God damn it. What? You were cleaned up. Fun. Okay, we're back. We're just going to try and get one of the good endings. Uh, so when she puts the bag over your head, you're supposed to say, please, I don't want to do this. Oh, you're already begging. I felt her hand touch my shoulder briefly. I think you're gonna be good at this. I felt a draw straight at a bag tie around my head and we skip ahead. So right now we've got the, the office key as well as the pen. Uh, I know I cannot lock the door now, so let's leave the room, all right? Uh, I pushed the pen into the hole in the door handle. After some nudging, I managed to get a click. I turned the handle. It's open. I peeked out of the room. A long hallway and what appeared to be some sort of lounge area. Or cabinets and papers littered the place. Past the lounge area was a door that looked like it went to another office. However, my attention was much more focused on what appeared to be an elevator. That could be my ticket out of here. Okay, I'm supposed to go into the elevator to lower my sanity, so let's do that. I approach the elevator. The lights are all on. This should be working. I press the up arrow. I heard something. My heart started hammering as the elevator doors opened in front of me. I rushed inside. It was surprisingly clean compared to the rest of what I've seen. Eight floors, three basements. I looked up above the door. Apparently, I'm on basement one. No wonder I haven't seen any windows. I pressed the button for the ground floor. I jumped in a loud beep. What? A light was flashing next to a slot. Card slot. Oh, no, no, no. I frantically tried the other buttons. Even the second basement. Everything just made the light flash. I groaned in defeat. This thing won't go anywhere without some kind of card key. I'm leaving the elevator. I entered a larger area it, uh, from the hallway. Okay, let's see. So I'm supposed to go to the break room now. I'm not sure uh, which one it is. So I'm just going to save and make sure that I pick it right, I guess. Okay. Uh, hey, hi. The door. Room key. Unlock door. I press the key to lock on the door in the other lounge. To my surprise, it went in. It went easily all the way in. Holy, this is the right key. I slowly opened the door. I tentatively entered the room. 
Definitely an office. It's cleaner, though. Someone's been in here. I stopped in place and I noticed something out of place. A picture of a man, printed out and blown up. And dots in it. Ugh, Celia must use this room. But she must really hate whoever that man is. Something about this room made me feel really nervous. But she might keep something useful in here. Ooh, uh, ee, ay, 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 uh, what's that time? I don't know what's that time. I searched the area. Search the desk. The, the desk looks recently used. I checked the desk drawers. Paper, makeup, money. Briefly considered cash, but money isn't going to help me here. Oh, wait. In the back, there was a bottle of expensive looking brandy and empty flask. I pulled the bottle out. I'm not going to swig it. I briefly imagine her drinking at this desk. The image is kind of sad. I placed the bottle where I found it. Right. Search area. Search the storage. I started looking through the store office storage. A lot of empty drawers. So far, nothing I could actually use. Whoa. In a drawer by itself, there was a black device. A taser? That's definitely a taser. It's the kind you'd have to touch someone with. I tentatively press a button. Nothing. I choked over it and popped it back open. No batteries. I huffed in annoyance. Well, I'm keeping it. Uh, I'm going to search the floor. I checked around the office floor. It's actually pretty clean in here. There's pretty much nothing on the floor. Huh? There's something going up against the wall on the bookcase. I grabbed the bookcase and shoved it to the side. A door! I looked down with a keypad. I could feel my heart rate increasing. If she took so much care to hide this, it must be the way out. I'm not going to use that just yet. Uh, leave the office. Enter the larger opening from the hallway. Uh, door by the elevator? I moved the handle on the door. It's unlocked. I entered the room and looked around. This must be some kind of break room. Or at least it used to be. Wait. I focused on the sink at the end of the room. Water! I quickly ran up and turned the tap. Nothing. I guess no one's paying for plumbing here. I sighed and sat down. Okay, let's see. Search area. Uh, vending machine. I tapped the screen on the machine. It's not powered. I checked around the back, but I couldn't find a card for it. A cord. I sat in frustration. Uh, I guess I could try reaching up in here. Uh, reach inside. Carefully put my arm inside the old machine. Can't feel anything. I strain to reach further. I started moving faster. Something about this making me nervous. Come on. I couldn't reach high enough. There's... No? I felt a distinct shape of a can in the bottom corner of the machine. Jackpot! Nice! Okay, I pulled out my prize. Diet ginger ale. The baggers can't be choosers, I guess. My vision wavered. I'm so tired. Oh no, Frank! I found a vaguely comfortable position and laid down. I'm guessing I'm screwed. What the hell? I was sorry to wait by the sound of her voice. What are you doing out here? I... Wait, does she have a gun? Don't move. Wait! I said don't move! The force and noise knocked me backwards. I fell to the ground as my body began to register the pain. The sound of her approaching was lost to the blood pounding in my ears. I reached out to clutch the wound on my thigh. I barely tried to hold it as blood poured from the wound. What? Why are you bleeding so much? My leg was beginning to feel cold. Patty was slowing my thoughts down. No, no, no! I only shot you in the leg! Stop bleeding! I paid for you! You're not allowed to die unless I make you! You belong to me! The cold feeling was spreading. Uh, I couldn't seem to lift my arms. I couldn't see or feel much anymore. But I could still hear her. You were shot down. Frick. Okay, so we're back. I've already went to the elevator to lower my sanity. What we're supposed to do is try the door by the elevator, okay? Move the handle by the door. It's unlocked. la dee da dee dee da 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 Shut up. I, I know all this. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I search area. I go to the vending machine. And la dee dee la dee doo I grab the soda. Yeah, I have the soda now. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to leave the break room, okay? And I enter the larger open area from the hallway. And I'm going back to the small office. I enter the small dim room. And what I'll do is that considering I am tired, I am going to sleep. Hopefully that helps. Okay, now that she's fed us and she's already gone, I'm not sure what time it is right now. We're supposed to use the keypad. Oh... And I believe that, um, I, I don't know where we were supposed to find the password, but it's supposed to be 0287. Got it. I got it wrong. Frick. Okay, so I had to look through the guide again. We're back in the elevator. Apparently, if you search here, 
Um, you will find a clue to like what's the code in the desk. I checked over the small area. Not much to be seen in here. I closely examined the elevator's button panel. It had to be one of those little holes. Wait. What? I grabbed the pin from my pocket. Come on. I pressed the pin in and felt it pop. The front panel of the buttons came right off. Before I could look at the wiring, I was distracted by a piece of paper. The hell? I carefully pulled out and unfolded the paper. 0247. Who would have thought of doing this? 0247. This is blood. I stared at the paper. I have no idea what this means. Well, we know what this means, and that means we have a clue to get into the office. Okay, we're back in the office. We searched the floor. There's a number pad. Okay, the code is 0247. Oh, it worked. I opened the door and stepped into the darkness. Stairs. My excitement died in my throat. Down. Well, whatever is down there, she's worked hard to hide it. I have to check it out. I descended the stairs and turned the corner. What the frick? I froze and stared. The top. Blood. Whatever the hell was going on with those mannequins. What has she been doing down here? Uh, I'm going to search the area, specifically the floors. I started to look around the disturbing room. There's so many stains. I shook my head. I need to concentrate. There was a lot of junk around, but it was hard to imagine being able to use any of it. I nearly gave up before a small glint caught my eye. I went back over a pile of junk in a corner. It's a spool of wire. I bent down to pick it up. I pulled a bit off the roll. This is really strong and sharp. I think I'll be able to use this. Nice. I shoved it into my pocket. Right. Good. Uh, now we can go back upstairs. I better move this bookshelf again. I grunt as I push the shelf back to where I found it. Uh, leave the office. I enter the large open area from the hallway. Uh, can I lock the door? I slid the key into the lock and lock the door. All right, cool. So we're gonna skip ahead to when, uh, to the final day, okay? Right after she decides to cut us up. So let's go. Okay, we're back in the office. I'm going to set the wire trap. I pulled out a spool of wire, unraveling a bit. I watched the light glint off of it. It's strong and hard to see. The idea for a trap quickly took shape in my mind. The door frame is metal. I crouched out to take a look. Screws. Ah! I pulled out the office key and used it to loosen the screws on either side of the door frame. Now I have something to tie the wire to. I twisted the wire around one protruding screw, then the other. I bent the wire back and forth and used the key to cut it off. I was sweating from the effort by the time I finished, but... This looks like a really good trap. The wire, only inches off the floor across the doorway, was tough to spot. There's no way she'd notice it while she tried to enter the room. She'll trip for sure. And when she does, I shoot my lip. But one sap at a time. Right. Now all I gotta do is wait. I stay here. It's a noise always been so loud. The mechanical hum of the lights and the drones of ventilation system. I don't care about all this. Let's wait till Harold gets here. What was that? I whip my head and looked behind me. What? There's nothing behind me. I thought I heard. I couldn't stop the chill from calling out my skin on my back. I jumped and spun again. The feeling when someone is right next to your ear. My heart was pounding. I was panting. Who's there? My own hoarse voice sounded alien to me. I looked down at my shaking hands. Why am I shouting? There's nothing here. I fall back to the urge to cry. I can't do this anymore. I stay. Stay in the room. Okay, we're just gonna skip till something interesting happens. I watched, stunned, as the door flew open and a large man tripped on the wire I set for Celia. He smashed into the floor for a loud thud. I looked up and saw Celia behind him, the moment, for a moment, just as stunned as I was. She took a step back in the doorway. There's no way past her. I had to think fast. I leapt on top of the man and pulled out the rest of my wire. I wrapped it around his neck and turned back to her. What is this? A gift. I... I'll kill him for you. I look back to her. I don't know who he is. The man bucked under me. I tightened the wire in response. What am I doing? I began to thrash and panic. I made gurgling noises. Do it. Her command rang through me. I ran on instinct. I pulled on the wire until my hands bled. He was trying to scream, but he couldn't. He was big, but he wasn't flexible. The wire was digging into his throat, and he couldn't do anything to shake me off his back. 
I could feel her watching me. Her hands were steady. It seemed easier with someone commanding me. I was just following an order. His struggling grew weaker, but I kept the wire tight. After a while, he was only twitching under me. I couldn't feel my fingers. He slumped onto the floor. I began to turn back to her. Pain shot through my body. My back! She was behind me, and her knife was lodged in my back. Why? I'm sorry, Lion. I lurched forward from the pain. I know. I coughed and tasted blood filling my mouth. He called the police. I have to go. Try to talk. Try to do anything. I couldn't move. One more blood came from... Only more blood came from my throat. I could feel her arms around me. For what it's worth. It was fun while it lasted. I ran... What do you mean I ran out of time? Okay, we're back. I'm not sure what I did different, but for some reason my sanity is a little higher despite everything I did earlier. I couldn't feel my fingers. He slumped to the floor. I turned back to look at her. She was shaking. Celia? You did it. He's actually dead. I felt dizzy. What now? The police are already coming. If you're still here, you can't stay. She extended her hand. I pulled out a bloody wire from my hand so I shakily reached out for her. She pulled me onto my unsteady feet. We killed him together. She was breathing hard. She pulled me along by the hand like a child. We have to go. We reached the elevator, and I watched her use a key card. I'm actually leaving this building. It seemed so surreal to be walking around the ground floor of her. I could see the street lights outside the windows. She let go of my hand and looked me in the eyes. I can't stay here. I'm going to find out what happened. I need to disappear. I watched her face as she battled with some internal decision. By the time they find out it's me, I'll be long gone. You have to get out of here. No one will ever know you were involved. Run. God, still don't have to tr- uh, I'll run, I'll run. I wasn't going to think twice. I nodded once and pushed the office door buildings open. I ran out into the street filled with street noise and rain. I kept running for as long as I could. Never looked back. You lived. You were released. We're still going to go for one more ending. I'm going to need to somehow lower my sanity even lower without getting all the way to zero. Okay, we're back. Something I had to do was basically I had to wait. Uh, I had to wait in the room so that I would get hungry. And when I get hungry, when, you're, when your hunger bar goes to zero, you actually lose some sanity, which actually leads to me having like 30 sanity. This is the only way you can get the option to stay at the end here. I don't know what triggers the alternate ending where it says like, oh, you ran out of time. But like... God damn it, it took me way too long to get here. Let's see what the stay ending is. I want to stay with you. She's stiffened in shock. What? Well, you have money, right? We could run together. We could start over together. I thought I could see an extra shine in her eye through her confusion. But what about... I don't want to go back to my old life. Please, let me come with you. This makes no sense. This is insane. I'm the one that killed him. We both have to run. We can figure out the rest later. I bit my lip and reached out. I held her hand in my own, ignoring the cuts from the wire. She looked down at the blood between her fingers. Okay. We'll run. Ah, We ran away together. Anyway, that was Celia's round for Price of Flesh. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, you'll have to go look for it yourself. I'm not linking this game in the description because like like I said, the scenes in this game are rather intense. There are some bits which I did have to cut out and put on my Patreon. So if you guys do want to see those scenes, hey, uh, link to the Patreon is in the description below. But anyway, we will be back for one more route, which is Fox's route in Price of Flesh. It's apparently a secret DLC bit, and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be getting out of it. I heard a certain someone's coming back. I'm not going to tell you who. But anyway, thank you all so much for coming. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. And as always, I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.